What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the More Life Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, a.k.a. Wheelchair Kev, and my beautiful co-host beside me is... Cassandra. Welcome to another episode where we share real stories told by real people. So strap in. And let's get started. You, you, you got to let it go. You, you got to let it go. All right, man, let's get this started, man. I've been, hey, look, hey, look, I ain't gonna lie, my man. I've been nervous again. I've been nervous to get it started back. It's, it's all good, though. Yeah. Hey, it, it, the only way is through. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why I kind of wanted to do you first because, you, you know, me and you had a. Me and you had real good chemistry whenever we did it the first time. So, you know, like since the audio messed up on that one and we was going to do it again, I was like, you know what, let's go ahead and do it like this. So I wanted you to be, you know, like the first one that so we can kind of, you know, like get it out of the way. You know what I mean? You're so, the first yeah. one on on season uh, season two. Yeah. So this is the first yeah. interview for season two. Yeah. It's more lit, too. You know, we got the, the background set up. So yeah. you um, on the podcast now. And I'm on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> video i was looking at the video yeah <laughs> hell yeah you feel me? As, as being a creator man we gotta support each other you feel me? exactly For sure. exactly and then to, to speak on that as well picture is rolling hey look i've been seeing the videos that y'all been uploading y'all eating good over there we're mixing everything you feel me yeah so the mukbangs all that stuff I, see when high can't cause mukbangs it's like We'll not think about mukbang. We'll probably do blogs, but it just right. came, came along. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. And okay. Out of all that, our mukbangs and our blogs mostly be hitting. So that's exactly the videos I've been watching. I've been watching the mukbangs and I've been watching the vlogs. I would- I actually watched a vlog where I went to Miami, and then she been wanting to go to Miami too. So it's like you know what I mean. Like yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I, look, I need oh to get about there. Hey, you gonna love it. Okay. You gonna love it. It, 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 it. It's good. Okay. You know, bad everywhere now, but mm-hmm. it's good. Like one of Miami is perfect. Like and plus on that, I I, I just showed y'all the, sent y'all the video. I just became an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. a club, a secret that we get all hotels, Hawaii, anywhere in the world, wholesale. Okay. Oh wow, that's good. That's good. That's why I, I said that to you because I thought about you and your wife. I'm like, y'all like want to travel? You mm-hmm. say ten thousand of dollars and and the thing about it what i love about it is like for them i go to hawaii you know hawaii a person you know, has to pay like i'm gonna say two thousand three thousand dollars just to get there and stuff yeah. and all that but with this how 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 we is like wholesale you got your your own um, first day like the first day you get there they throw your party Ooh. they got all your trips lined up your they got like like excursions and everything in it, mm-hmm. and you pay like a thousand. Okay, for all that four days. Oh, and they have a whole become, itinerary. When you become a when you become a member, you get a free trip off the bat. Mm, okay. I've never been on a cruise before, so okay, 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 okay. So all that's through your YouTube channel, right? You funneling all that through like your YouTube channel, uh, like uh, like showing yeah, your subscribers yeah. and everything like that. Yeah, I'm doing all that because it's it's about wellness. You do wellness with it, okay? Because we got we got um not cosmetics, but like health products, like for skin mm-hmm. and stuff for men and women. Okay. Um, you do the Dead Sea. Mm. I think about the Dead Sea, how it cleanses your skin, make you make you look more like fresh and stuff like that. We okay. Got, um, Mineral masses, everything. We call on, um, I forgot the name of it, but it, it, if you go to my website, it'll be in my own life. If you go to my video, okay. go to Secret, or you go to my own channel. What's the website and the channel called? The channel Pitch Us Rolling. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. What's the website? Website is on, uh, I remember because I just got, well, okay. I just got it, so I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to remember it. You know what? Links down below. I have you send me the link and I'll put it down there in the description box below so they can go check him out. Look, picture us rolling. Make sure you guys go check him out on YouTube. He's doing some things on there. I like it. I like it. Out of all the foods that you eat on your mukbangs, what's some of your favorite ones to eat? Oh, man. 
Kunk. Well, we let we ain't eat Kunk salad in a long time because I'm in the Midwest. They don't okay. have Kunk up here. Okay. But Kunk salad. Okay. I What's love that? crab. Kunk salad is a, a sheep shell. It's like okay. you, um, you know the sheep shell. The thing was inside the sheep shell mm-hmm. is like a big piece of meat, and you just chop it up. A lot of people would like say it's a slug or whatever. Oh, um, I don't think I've ever had that. No, I think I think that's matter of fact. Put like this: it's like a clown. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna have to look that so, up. I'm gonna have to look a that salad? up. A salad? How you say BS yet? How you say? Aphrodisiac. Aphrodisiac, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's those things that you like to eat that's in the shell. No, those are oysters, oysters right? But that's different. It's, it's like an oyster, but it's, it's, it's on sheep shell. You know, sheep shell, like, okay. yeah. maybe like, oh, this is the ocean. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I've never had that. I don't know. Kunk. Yeah. It's called Kunk. You said Kunk? Kunk. Kunk. All right, but I'm going to have to check it out. Look, you guys, look, you go follow him on his YouTube channel, Picture Us Rolling. Website will be in the description box below. All right. Hey, look, yes. hey, look, I like the branding. I like the t-shirt. That's something yes. that I feel like that we need to do a lot more of because I we know. don't brand ourselves like I that. I love that. Like, you know. Mm-hmm. I like it too. I like it. Hey, it's not like promoting yourself. Right. Exactly. And that's really one thing where I would say I kind of fail at is promote myself. I feel like I'd be like a little ashamed or a little bit embarrassed to kind of promote myself. So like for you, was it easy to kind of transition to promoting yourself like that? Because I know for me, it's a little bit hard because I like... I do YouTube, but I don't feel like a YouTuber yet. Well, it, it took, it took, it's like, how can I explain it? Like, when we got started, it was just us. Mm-hmm. Like, but like, going out in public, you videotape yourself. Yeah, you do be like, and he's looking at me like, <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing? Oh, that might be a YouTuber, this mm-hmm. and that, whatever, whatever. Right. But I just got over our fears. It, our fears, because we, all right, how me and my wife got started with YouTube? Oh, next. Mm-hmm. How me and my wife got started with YouTube, we used to look at Ken and Vieira. That's the first couple I seen. Okay. Like, like, okay, like, babe, we can do that. But we was not looking for, for the money and none of that. We didn't even know we can get paid through YouTube. Oh mm, wow. Okay. So so we like we we just want the memories like God forbid if I die or my wife die, my, my, my daughter, Sarah, mm-hmm. she can she can go back and look at these videos like look at my mom because you know once it's on YouTube it's on forever to let let you take it off or it gets took it down. Right. Mm-hmm. So so we you plan on doing YouTube next thing you know. So I doing YouTube and I seen that first check, I like, hey, <laughs> Google son, that's a check. <laughs> and and it was, that was history then and yes. I was there and it was like we grinding and plus on that we was looking for other ways of income. And YouTube is the number one thing that son, you ain't got to pay money to start. How I started off was I started vlogging on a phone as well. So for anybody out there, you ain't got to have the fancy cameras. You ain't got to have, you know, like the latest tech. You know, all you need is a smartphone with a good camera on it. That's it. That's yep. it. Just to get started with really. it. If you pay attention, if you pay attention, everybody got iPhones. Right. Yep. Phones, whatever. Like I say you don't need a telephone. You just need good lighting. You got good lighting. You got it, it was to one point. Our camera broke, and our camera lens is gonna cost like because we had a Sony when Sony A6000 came out. Okay, the lens broke, and I had to I had to pay some money like three four hundred dollars for a lens. I'm like, yeah, we got that right now. Baby. So, well, next thing we do, that's that's another thing what put us push us to mukbang. Got our phone, put all type of lights behind the camera. Ooh, okay, and hey. Here we hear now. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, how long after y'all starting a YouTube channel did the subscribers want to kind of know more about you and your situation as far as like you being in a wheelchair? Well, as before, I we, oh, well, we did start a vlog. They see me in a wheelchair. Yeah. It's like when we was doing mukbang. All right, when we started vlogging, my camera broke. Yeah. So we only did a couple of months of vlogging. Oh. So we did a lot of sit down mukbangs. A lot of people ain't know I was in the chair because oh, sit wow. down, me and she sit yeah. down. Yeah. And we got our camera back, and people are like, "Oh, he's in a wheelchair." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "You, you don't like you don't supposed to be in the wheelchair. Yeah. Like you in the wheelchair, you never mm-hmm. know that." And a lot of people, other people started doing YouTube and stuff. Like I know that it's like, man, you inspire me, man. You push me, man. Because look, you in the chair, you can do this. Like man, it it. You just got to do it. It's a mindset. Exactly. Mindset. Exactly. Mindset. 
Um, okay, so Jason, um, before we kind of go more into detail, can you tell the viewers out there, we are, you know, you're about you, where you're from, how old are you, you know, tell us about your family, because you, obviously your YouTube is not just you, it's you and your family. So tell us, you know, tell everybody out there, more, you know, about you. Well, my name is Jason Hall, born and raised in Miami, Florida, mm. 34 years old. Um, I have a wife, my wife Nisa, and I have a daughter named Sarah. Um, and you currently live in Miami, Florida? Oh, I, I'm currently in Indiana right now. I'm okay. in Indiana right now. Okay. So. Okay. Why we left Miami cost of living is like ridiculous. Yeah. Well, well, I was like, that's crazy because I actually heard that that the like the minimum rent in Miami, I actually heard it yesterday was like twenty six hundred dollars. Like that's crazy. See, it it it, it went up way worse now. Oh. Ooh. We live in California, so I feel like I I understand. The prices out here then damn near double. Like that's how bad it's been getting. Like, like for example, when we were staying in Florida, mm -hmm. I've been up in Indiana five years, one or five years. This okay. is next month. Okay, this five years I've been up here. At the time, the minimum wage was still eight, eight, eight dollars and some change. Mm, okay, they just recently when Biden got in the chair, they just recently made it fifteen dollars an hour in Florida. Dang so imagine damn. you getting nine dollars an hour, paying twelve hundred dollars. That's like impossible. How you can make that? Yeah. Okay. It's like I had to use all of my as me being a disability check. My mm -hmm. wife paid that paid the rent. Then you know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's like we got a stretch here, got a kid, got to buy mm -hmm. clothes for school, and yeah, it's like hey, Midwest is more cheaper. So mm -hmm. that move him. Do you regret leaving Miami at all? Yeah, and a no. Okay. I'm, I'm putting it like this. I'm putting it like this. No, I'm going to say no. I don't regret leaving Miami because okay. out of us leaving Miami, it was a better benefit. I had okay. grown tremendously. I was like building my credit. We had all the time. You can breathe. You can live. Okay. Versus check the check. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And only thing I miss from Miami family I, I all my family down uh, down that yeah. way you know what i'm saying yeah so it's like we up here we ain't got i got family in tennessee you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but it's like we don't go there all the time but it's yeah. just us up here you know what I'm saying? but i do miss home as like family as community like that yeah but other 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 than that i love god what he let us go through because the transition made us better Mm, okay i feel like i can relate and also we can relate as well mm -hmm. because you know we're both originally well she's originally from cali but we met in georgia but i also have fam but i moved to georgia and i also had family in virginia so it's like like i really didn't regret it because of, i feel like how it allowed us to grow as individuals you know like just moving out here and like living out here and just seeing like the rest of the world because living in georgia you kind of forget that there's a whole other world out there. And then, like, just coming to Cali, just seeing the stuff that I see out here, it's like, dang, it's like, man, like, they grow up way different than us over there. Different cultures. Oof, it, way different. It, Tacos. It, it's like, see, like, I understand exactly what you're saying. Like, it, it, it's like we, we the same way, but we was different. Yeah, right. Right. exactly. Like you, went from, you went from Georgia to a big, bad city. Mm -hmm. I went from a bad city to Indiana, like, this city, but it's country city. Yeah, you know I trust me. I know. I know. But, uh, yeah. But I ain't gonna lie. One thing I can say about the slow as growing, having kids mm -hmm. is good because right. they can really learn. Mm -hmm. Not saying they can't learn in the bigger city, yeah. right? but it's it's like, it's more community okay. versus in the city. It's just like... Fast. Woo. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. So you said you grew up in Miami. So how was that for you growing up in Miami? Well, growing up in Miami, I was born and raised in the project, Edison Project, okay. Miami, Florida, a.k.a. Little Haiti. Mm. Okay, I was born and raised there. A lot of violence. We had, it's like growing, I mean, growing up in the project, 
you had your good and you had your bad. Yeah. But back then, growing in the nineties and eighties and stuff, it's it was more of a community back then. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? More adults was involved, more of the older folks was involved with the kids back then versus mm -hmm. nowadays. It's like it's crazy now. Like we had a childhood back then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not saying kids don't have childhood now. It's like they're it's like these kids growing up, they come in, they they growing up grown already. Like <laughs> they see everything on the phone. Yeah. No. Like it's crazy. But I grow I had a good lifestyle, you feel me? I, I did grow around violence. Mm -hmm. We ain't gang bang, you're just people like, oh man, I'm from over here, and I'm from over there, and like little okay. stuff like that, beef, whatever. And Growing up, I've been to jail a couple of times. You know what I'm saying? At, at a young age, 14, I have got locked up for um for murder before. Okay. And I, I stayed in there for up to six years. I, oh. I was 13. I got out when I was like, I think 19, almost 20. Okay. And went and, and I got out Went back in. I had did like two years. I had a violent charge. Like I had got it in a dispute with not dispute, but like I was out there. I was in the streets. I was. Yeah. I, I did what I seen around me. Hey, how to get money? Yeah. So don't, okay. I did this. I, I did. I did it all. Okay. And one day police came and they caught up with me. Mm -hmm. And I ain't want. I ain't want to go down for all this stuff. So. The officer was trying to take me in. I had to end up, we had to like like tussle whatever. Yeah. End up going with assault on the officer and all that. I went back to prison. I did two years and got out. And that's when I met my wife. Okay. So, so we've been together. What married? What been together twelve years? We've been married for eight years now. Oh wow! Congrats! Congratulations! So yeah. That's so far right there. Hey, hey, look, my man. Hey, look, the women, they'll change your life around, all right? They'll make you want to do better for yourself, all right? Because that's how she was for me. She made me want to do better for myself. Mm -hmm. She made me want to get my credit better. She <laughs> made me just want to overall be a better person. You know, like, I ain't going to say I'm the best, but, you know, I'm still learning. You know, but that's what having, you know, a good person beside you does for you. It allows you to want to grow more. You know, like, you don't want to stay stuck. You want to achieve more so I, de I definitely can understand and relate to you again as far as you know like having somebody beside you and then also you, you know you growing because you say you was doing all that stuff but now look where you at right now you know whole different mindset hey, hey. sometimes we gotta go through that so see yeah this is another thing me and my wife always talk about sometimes you gotta go through your battles mm -hmm. everybody yeah. show everybody show that they on top of the hill on they on top of the world yeah. They don't show the whole time behind the club, behind the own um, curtains that like, I had to go through this, I had to go through that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, as for example, like, as you said about your wife, also, I, I think of my wife, like, God said in His word, it ain't good for man to be alone. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So, God put her in my pathway. And the crazy thing about this, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I ain't shared this with nobody. I, I shared it with a couple of people. Okay. But as when I was locked up the first time, now, as a kid, I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, give me a good woman. Mm. You know what I'm saying? A virtuous woman. Yeah. I don't want a bad chick. I want a virtuous woman. It's a difference between a bad chick and a virtuous woman. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. You feel what I'm saying? Everybody, I, I look up the word bad. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What's the definition of bad? You look that up. Bad chicks. You, know, you, want, you want that type of woman? Or you want a woman that's going to nourish you? They're going to cherish you, and y'all can cherish each other, love each other, Ooh. and y'all be for each other. You feel me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That boy dropping them gems. So, from there, God was her. Huh. And the crazy thing about this, I prayed for, I prayed to God, and I left it in his hand. I just trust him and kept it moving. Yeah, I was dating and all that, and I ain't meet her. When I got locked up, I ain't meet her to like a good word. Let me see you. I ain't meet her four years later. Four, and I prayed for her, 
four years later, I met her. Mm. After I and the crazy thing about it, I was in prison praying for. I went back to prison and got out. The same day I got out of prison, the same day I laid eyes on her, going through my brother's door. That was my brother. That was my brother' wife friend. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, okay. So oh, okay. Next thing you know, I walk. She walked in the house. Oh, who stuff it is on the floor? I ain't paying no mind. I just walked out the door. I had to go to my probation office. Yeah. So you got 24 hours to check in with the probation office, or they're gonna violate you. And I ain't got, I ain't got time going back to prison. Mm-hmm. So I met my wife. Then she ain't come back to like two days later. Then we started talking. She was smoking. That one at the time she used to smoke black and miles and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I had to hit up black and mile. And we exchanged, we talked to each other. I said, no, nah, we just gonna mm-hmm. be friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From there, God, she told me, like, down the road, but she told me within that first one or two days, God told her, this is your husband. Oh, wow. God told her, this is your husband. Mm-hmm. Mm. I ain't know what me yet until, like, months later. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, months and months later. Mm-hmm. So... That's crazy. Ended up being together, whatever, whatever. And being like two or three months together, she got pregnant with my daughter, Star. She's 10 now. She's okay. 10 now. Okay. So, and I was out there in the life, living in the street. I, at first, I was I, I was, I was, I was doing light work. I was, I'm going to be honest with you, I was selling weed. Okay. And I was working at a car wash because I needed a job to pay the probation officer. Mm-hmm. So, I got the job. I'm doing my little side hustles and mm-hmm. I'm doing good. You feel me? Not yeah. I'm doing good, but I'm you feel I'm doing wrong, but I'm doing good, staying out of trouble though. Okay. So me doing that process, I end up completing my probation and everything. And Okay. Yeah, here I am now. Mm-hmm. Well, I I, uh, I don't know if y'all got any other questions. So. All right, so growing up, did you ever know anybody in the wheelchair? I seen some people in the wheelchair, yeah. but they're not permanent. They're, they had like a missing leg or yeah. or like they had prosthetic legs, stuff like that. I didn't mm. see nobody like like wheelchair bound. Yeah. No, I knew one person and by the by God, mercy and grace, her name Gilda. Okay. She used to be in the chair. I think she, she got in a car accident. She was in that chair for years. Mm. By the grace of God, she's walking to this day. Okay. So, oh wow. She had a tube in her neck, everything. She got a bad car accident. Yeah. That's the only person I knew who was in the wheelchair. Okay. All right. So, so since you ain't really know too many people, I'm guessing you ain't really know any information about like a SCI injury or like stuff like that until you actually got in a wheelchair. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't know nothing about this. Uh, I got in the wheelchair. Same. And it's, and it's crazy that you say that. Me and my wife were just talking about this. Since, since, since I got in the wheelchair, it's like all the handicapped spot took it up. And I see a whole bunch of people in wheels that's like, where all this come from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I used to always see the handicapped spot open like they had now. I'm mm-hmm. seeing most of the people in the wheelchair. But, but matter of fact, I, I'm going to tell you all my story for me getting in the wheelchair. So. Okay. okay. I know. You feel me? I'm going to get to the juice. You okay. All right. So, like I said, me, I met my wife and everything. Yeah. I, was, I was trapping, whatever. It came to the point at the wash, car wash. It's like, man, I, I'm making too much money in the project with selling this dope. Because yeah. I went from weed to selling everything under the sun. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So i like, man, I ended up quitting that job and full time in the project. You feel me? So and the project's doing, doing, doing what a, a dope boy do. And one day, Police was hot that day. It was so hot. You feel me? Like it's like man, I man, take no risk of getting hit. You feel me? Or getting caught with guns or whatever. Yeah. So we end up putting the guns up and like trying to walk around and like sell like this and like that. And it's like, nah, man, we're gonna close early. So in the process of closing early, my homeboy was on um, my dog slick, my dog on Alpo. And me, we we, we get in the car because we get in the F one fifty, the one the old one row. Okay, ooh, F-150 okay. F one fifty with the one row. So I'm in a car. 
I got in the car before any uh, any one of them. I'm on the phone with my, with my wife, telling me yeah, I'm gonna come home and this and that. Yeah, so we talking, smooches and all that. You know how that goes. And that's it. You know, soon I pressed the button. Like soon I hung up. First shot, boom. Like I was in the truck. I'm on the driver's side. I'm on this side and the driver's side. The first shot ran of the um of the gun, boom. And the, some type of way, I think the bullet just went through the truck and hit me right here, hit me right in the side. Mm. It hit me right in the side, and like I said, oh, like mm. my reaction, like oh, like my homeboy. All right, before uh, before the shot, as soon as I about to get off the phone, my homeboy got in, mm. and my other homeboy got in. Was just about to pull off. Then the first shot, boom! It hit me in the side. Yeah. Boom! I ain't knew I was paralyzed or anything. I was still moving. Mm-hmm. Like I still could move my body and stuff. Okay. Then when that first shot, when I said, "Oh, it warmed my other homeboy slick," so he got out the car, and ran. My other homeboy, he he like froze a little bit, and I seen him froze, so I I grabbed him, like push him down, like but the steering wheel and laid on top of him. And they start shooting up the show, the AK forty seven. Boom, 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 yeah. yeah, that that was my mindset. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But that was it. They shot from a distance and and like ran. So next thing you know, I get out the car, I get up, I sit up, I say, "Oh snap! I I, I can't move, bro." Oh. Like oh, like blood everywhere on my jeans. So I'm like, oh, and it's like soon that happened. They opened the door, pulled me out the car, mm-hmm. and it's like next thing you know, the ambulance they're like that. I'm like, whoa, like, soon they laid me on the pavement. Eminem came, came over there, put me on the stretcher, put me in the car. Yeah. I mean, put me, I said, in the car, and in, in the Eminem truck. And I thank God by his grace and mercy for sparing us. Because, man, we supposed to be dead. We supposed to be sushi. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but God, mercy and grace, I give all praise and honor to him. You feel me? Because it was him who shielded us from the bullets. Because it's like how one bullet hit. And the rest of the bullets ain't hit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you only got shot but one time? Only got shot one time. That <sighs> top of bullet still in my spine right now. It's mm. still on my spine. I'm a T9 right now. Mm. Okay. So, yeah, the top is right. It's, it's it right on my spine. It's like sitting. It's pinching my nerve. Because mm. I can still feel sometimes under my feet. Especially oh, okay. like when I roll my legs or whatever. I can feel a sensation. Or my mm. feet hit the ground. I can feel, I can feel the vibrations and stuff. Okay. Yeah. And my legs, like right now, my legs tingling. I gotta stretch it out. And let mm. me know, like. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, from there, okay. When I was in the ambulance truck, so yeah. By the grace of God, God gave me the opportunity to repent because mm-hmm. they shot me with some stuff, like made me like knock me out of sun. Yeah. So, or I don't know if I probably knocked out because I lost too many, too much blood or what. Mm-hmm. Cause I got hit in the lungs too. Mm. So I had to go through that breathing and all that junk too. But I'm, I'm tell you about that. Also, I had prayed, whatever. They cut my clothes off, whatever. Got to the place. I woke up. My nephew Quentin was there. He had came. Like, boy, you all, you good, up? Uh, you good, you good. And then my brother and all of them came. Seen everybody. Um, a couple more people came. on um, K. So. Next thing you know, I mean, you know, you been a ICU place or something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. The ICU. I don't know how long I've been. I think I've been in there no le- no more than a couple of days to almost a week. I think. Okay. So I know all together, me being in the hospital is like thirty days. Mm. No more than thirty days. Okay, that wasn't that long then. Now, when you got oh. shot, I do have a question. Sorry. Uh, did, was your um wife still on the phone when everything? When you guys, you know, when they were shooting at the truck and everything. Oh no! I just hung. So when I pressed the end, like like uh-huh. I cut the start on on oh, cut okay. the call off. Yeah. So when I did that, that's when I got shot. Oh. Mm. Okay. It was to the point that when my homeboy 
called my wife and say, "Oh, Jay got shot." And they uh-huh. she said, "Stop!" But she thought it was a joke because yeah, because she, she was got the phone with so she thought it was a joke. Uh-huh. Like y'all playing, yeah. So damn, it happened that fast. Whew. Okay, so that first bullet, do you feel like you just kind of said "oh" from just hearing the sound, or did you feel when that first bullet went in? Oh, I I felt I felt that first bullet go in like mm. it, it was a sting, like oh, mm-hmm. but I could still move. Yeah, at the time, mm-hmm. I don't know like when I I don't know what about me when I threw my homeboy down and laid on top of him and made it worse. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I don't know. But yeah. I was able to move in the truck at the time of the process they were shooting. Mm, yeah. I, I, like, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't feel my, I couldn't move my leg. I'm like, I can't move my leg. Like, yeah. that's, 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 I ain't about, but I ain't think about me being paralyzed. I'm just thinking like, yeah. my body is shot or something. I don't know. Yeah. That's how I felt as well. Because I couldn't feel my leg. So, I, so like, what really came to my head was, oh, this is what happens when you get shot. You just can't feel your legs. But, you know, like, so I had some type of recollection of me not being able to move my feet. and But then at the same time, it's just like, I want to get up. Like, help me up, help me up. But physically, I, I like, I can't get up. So, I could, trust me, I could, yep. definitely, I could definitely relate. And also, you know, maybe you shielding your friend, maybe that's why you're here today because that's, that's a selfless act right there. That's something that I don't you know. know. It's just, it, it's just like at that moment, I don't know. I, I yeah. feel that's like, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in my, own, in my, in my own, my street mentality mindset, yeah. man. You got to survive, bro. You got to ride yeah. for me, bro. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna make sure y'all are good, man. Yeah. Because I don't know. I, I was not selfish. Yeah. I like. That's what I mean. That's a selfless I'm act. It's love. Exactly. Exactly. And that's probably why you stay here to today because I'm pretty sure just even you moving a little bit causing bullets to, you know, like just just go right past you. You know, so do you know in total how many times they shot the car up? I don't even know how much, man. Damn. I don't know how many times, but hey, it, it was it was total. Felt like, like, oh. Yeah, the car was total. Felt like a lifetime, my bad. This is chopper, so it, it's like... Yeah. Like you gotta get out of the way. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, do you know how long it took for the ambulance to get there? Oh, soon so when they pulled me out the man, I'm I'm, I'm beyond I think like no more than a minute. That's crazy. Damn. So soon soon they laid me on the ground, mm-hmm. ambulance pulled right inside me. I don't know if there was a route, they was on a yeah. they was on a block already, or, and they got the call. Mm. Were you running out of breath? Like were you still breathing? You didn't have no trouble yeah, breathing. I was still breathing. No I ain't had no problem breathing or none of that. Wow. When I felt the pain of breathing and stuff, when I had to hit the hospital, and they said, oh, you got shot in your lungs, and we had to do surgery. That's crazy. To, um, drain your lungs out. Yeah. Because have blood in them. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that, oh, that's. That's good. Whew, that, 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 that's some pain right there. Like, um, mm. whew. Yeah. Breathing yeah. that too. You got to breathe in the tube to stretch your lungs mm-hmm. out, man. Did oh. any of your other friends get hurt real bad? Oh, every, everybody! Everybody was hurt. Everybody was wow. hurt. Mm-hmm. So you the only that's one that got shot? Number God, like it's like, hey, that's not but God. Yeah, because right. them old F one fifties, you know, them one seaters, like them wrong roads, it's just a straight. It's just straight across. You know what I mean? So straight all, across. so all y'all pretty much. Well, well, if you are, if you right beside the passenger door. Then I would say that you really pretty much are shielding everybody else when it comes to you know cars like that, because like yeah. when you look from the side, you pretty much the only person that they kind of see unless they sh- you know looking at you from an angle or shooting from an angle, you know what I mean? So, and that's crazy. So see, and, 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 yeah. as you as you say that shooting from angles, because it's like that that that's why. I, I knew it. it had to be God because, I, I, like you said, all the bullets for the book went into me. Yeah. All, said, I yeah. Supposed, if I got the first one, I supposed to got the rest of them. But by mm-hmm. God, grace and mercy, because it's it's so much room you can go at. It's like you can't really yeah. go nowhere. Like mm-hmm. being being shot up in a truck is a trap. Mm-hmm. A, a truck, car, whatever. When you in a car, truck, it's a, a nigga shooting at you. All I can say, you boy, you better hope you can get under the engine. Like. Yeah. Under the stand wheel, that's the only safe space with the engine at. 
Yeah. Because Ooh. being in the car is a death trap. Mm-hmm. And so, what it, what were you thinking? Like once you realized you were you were paralyzed, you know, now you gotta. Were you? Did it take you a while for for you to take that in, or were you back up and moving? Because I know you said you were only in the hospital for thirty days. And then you were out. Thirty one days. Yeah. Thirty one. Okay. I, I yeah thirty one. My yeah. So my my daughter was. I got all right. My daughter was born in January twenty eight. I was I was home with before my my wife was pregnant before she even got the baby. So. Mm. I got shot up, and, and the crazy thing about it, my nephew got killed. I think like seven days before I got shot. Damn. It was on the news on on nephew yeah. Big Red. Um, um. So, but yeah. Um. Yeah, it's December. So I got shot up around my mom on my mom, by my mama's birthday. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Around by that time, so I've been in there. I went through therapy. I mean, I, I mean, I, I did. I left ICU. They took me to the, like the therapy area. Mm-hmm. So I was over there. I I learned how to wheel a wheelchair, body shift, all that quick. Like, yeah. I I I ain't felt no way. Like, I, I'm be honest mm-hmm. with you. I ain't felt no way. I just I just looked at it like I'm thankful. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful. I'm alive. And my mind was just set out set for because I think because the motivation I got a baby on the way mm-hmm. or I mean my wife pregnant and yeah. I, I got I got my family there so my mind was just pushed through. Right. It's just I knew God was with me and hey God and my family and that, that, that's always on my mind. Mm-hmm. I, I was not stressing or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So at the time you got shot. How many months pregnant was your wife? Oh, she was eight. She was Damn. she was eight months pregnant. She oh, was wow. eight months pregnant. She could have dropped any day. How do you feel she took the information, you know, being pregnant and all? Oh, she took it hard. She yeah. she was like 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 how she explained to me like she didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. She didn't know where to go at. She she seen it looked like she just lost herself, like, oh my god, like like he he got shot. Like mm-hmm. is he okay? Is he dead? Stuff like that. Yeah. The first night, my nephew. I see my nephew in them before anybody. I think my wife came the next day because she ain't had no ride out there because the car we was in, God's mercy and grace. Before I got shot, a, a week before I got shot, I had crashed the car. Totaled the car. I supposed to went mm-hmm. through the windshield. By the grace of God, that day I put a seatbelt on. Mm-hmm. Police took me to jail on that, but I got out. I got out there. I just it just came to my mind. I got out on that day on oh, 21 days. I got out. Uh, okay. Yeah. So my wife was just to the point she was going to work pregnant. Mm-hmm. Because I, I was like, I gotta get another car. I gotta get this money up. Yeah. She, was going, she was walking to the bus stop, pregnant, going to work pregnant. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's ooh, that's tough. I think that was that's why I ain't worried about nothing else. I just thought about my wife and my my child. So that's why I ain't like stressing nothing. That right. was that motivation for you to get up out of there. You know, you said you was only there for yeah. thirty. You said that you was only there for thirty one days. So I can days. see that being I can see that being the motivation for you to get out now. Okay, so you said you woke up and your nephew was there, right? Yeah. Okay, so when you wake up. Does the doctor tell you at all that you're paralyzed, or does he give you any information about that? Because I know for me they didn't. They ain't give me no information to. No, he did though. My bad. When I was in the home, um, I did wake up. They did tell you you was paralyzed. You, he did a chest tube on you. Yeah. To drain out the blood. And you know what I'm saying the bullet on my spine. Mm-hmm. And that, that was at the time I was laying in the bed for a couple okay. of days. They ain't let me get up, none of that. Yeah. I just lay in the bed. Mm-hmm. And they like, uh, we don't want to, we didn't want, they didn't want to touch the bullet because they were scared because it's, it's right down my nerves, like, mm-hmm. pinching, like, pinching my nerves. So they ain't like, oh, we don't want to mess that up. And, yeah. Make you it know, worse. no doctors don't want to get sued or anything like that. They mess up. Right. Mm-hmm. So. 
Okay. That's okay. That, that's when they told me, yeah, that. And when I went to therapy, they was explaining to me they won't do no surgery to remove the bullet. Yeah. Just gonna leave it there. Okay. Okay, and then I've been you... looking for people like, hey, anybody ain't gonna move the bullet or anybody ain't gonna do nothing about it. I've been going to programs, you know, how, like they use as guinea pig to see he mm-hmm. walking. So I, I, I was into all that. You know? Yeah. You see what they told me? They told me that over time that the bullet will eventually start like trying to exit the body. So like the bullet, since it's a foreign object, the body is going to like start to push it out because they know it's, it's not supposed to be in there. So it should come out eventually. Now, I don't know what they're being, you know, directly on like a nerve or something like that. Like, I don't know like how that works, but I know, I know the doctor told me that, you know, like the bullet would have eventually exit the skin at some point in time. But See, I don't really kind of know. Bullet, I, I got a big bullet in me, though. It ain't Ooh. no, like, nine, like a nine, yeah. 22, they travel. But the bullet tip, like, this big, it, like, yeah. Yeah. There, like, yeah. I recently just took an x ray and went going to the chiropractor to get my back crack and stuff. Okay. And the bullet's still right there. Mm. Did you feel anything when you went to the chiropractor? Like, in your legs? Because I know you say. Sometimes you feel yeah, tingly. I, I, I start feeling a little, a little more sensitivity in my legs when I'm going to the chiropractor. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, wow, that's good. Like, I, I need to go to him before. I mean, like, I need to go to him again right now. Right. It was, it was cold up here for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So when you wake up, what can you feel and what can't you feel? When I woke up, um, I was just feeling a little bit on my stomach, like okay. What T nine that? I was feeling like right here, yeah, under the T nine a little bit, and it was fading away, like mm-hmm. below your belly like, button or above. I'm on. I was right on top of it, mm-hmm. but now over the years, I can feel, I can feel like all the way like I can say way under my belly button now. Okay, I can feel oh, okay. More. Some part of Faded feeling, uh-huh. yeah. but, but but it's like over time, time like that that time, time period, a lot of a lot of my nerves like we generated back. That's mm. good. That's I'm good. feeling a little more and more. Mm-hmm. Okay, now now do you feel like that the therapy kind of helps you a little bit? Like you know, like therapy, like chiropractic. Because I know for me, they said that you want to consult your doctor if you have an SCI injury. You want to consult your doctor before going to a chiropractor. Yeah, they see. I ain't. I, ain't, I just went. I'll be honest with you, I just went to the chiropractor just because, like... <laughs> yeah, that's I, how I'm I feeling. Because I, I know they said, because when he took a picture of my spine, he said my spine was a little, like, tilted. Yeah. So he trying to straighten up your spine. Mm-hmm. Then from there, you can find out this and that. Mm-hmm. I only did a couple of sessions of it, but it okay. was, like... i am be honest with you, when I did a couple of sessions, like, I started feeling more and more... A little sensitivity, you feel me? So okay, and that little bit is a lot to me. Like, right. thank God I can like, you feel me? Like, yeah. you feel something? Feel more? You feel me? Mm-hmm. So it was, a, it was a progress. Yep, I know. There's uh, but I understand what you're saying. Like, I need to check with. I ain't think about that. I'm, yeah. I'm I ain't, I ain't think about that. I just did it. Yeah. And I think it's hard to really know if it's like a complete spinal cord injury or an incomplete because I know some injuries you you can gain that's an, you know that feeling back. So I'm guessing because you can feel your legs a little bit like a little sensation in your legs. I'm guessing that you're a T nine incomplete then. See, I, I I need to go back to a spine person. I don't know what I yeah what I, I need to go back. Yeah, no, I was just, yeah, throwing it out there that there's two different, you know, there's like a complete spinal cord injury and Mm -hmm. an incomplete spinal cord injury because I know sometimes some people gain their feeling back. Yeah. Over, and it could be years since their injury. Mm -hmm. Um, But. Like, for example, um, I can say, oh, I I think I'm an incomplete. Yeah. Okay. An incomplete means like a possibility, like you can act like something Mm -hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Then do you get spasms at all? Oh, I get spasms all all the time. I ain't gonna lie, all the time. Mm. How does that feel for you? Because I can't, 
Because, you know, that's a question that I get asked all the time. If it's not the bowel care, then it has to do something with spasms. But I don't really have any information to give people on spasms because I don't get spasms. Because I'm a, I'm a T10, T11 complete. So, pretty much, I can't feel nothing from a little bit below the belly button on down. You know, so I don't really get the spasms at all. So, so for somebody out there that don't really know anything about the spasms, can you kind of tell them what that is? And also, how does it feel for you? Oh, like the spasms, like how I can explain it, how I can explain it in my way. Yeah. Like when, when my leg be jumping, like say for example, um, especially when I be laying in the bed, like spe- okay. like if I lay on somewhere, like my leg just start kicking out and stuff okay. like that. I'm getting in the shower, I be my leg spasm a lot. Yeah. I think it's sometimes how you stretch your body. Like for example, I see you doing a stand up chair. Yeah. You just stand up chair on Instagram. Mm-hmm. The standing frame, like, stuff like that. Like I think, what is my thing? Like when you stretch your body out, like being in the chair, we like cramped up. Like yeah. when you stretch out your body, mm-hmm. that's when I get my spasm. Like I don't know if I'm like because I'm in initiating something. Yeah. Okay. But I can feel it sometimes. Like especially my knees be shaking. Like my knees can literally be shaking. Like yeah. like on the chair. Mm-hmm. Just does that sometimes. Is it painful? It ain't painful like that. It, it's like to me, I don't, I don't, I don't know what well, it ain't painful. It, it ain't painful to me like that. It ain't painful to me like I look at it like, oh yeah, like oh it's moving. I be trying to like work it out like, yeah. Ooh, yeah, mm-hmm. like hey, let me move into that. Like mm-hmm. hey, I might connect something. Mm-hmm. That, that's how I be. Look. That's how I. I do it. Okay. Okay, now, do you feel like that anything that you do in your day-to-day life makes your spasms come on, like, like more or, like, like worse? Yeah, I be, I be well, I mean, all right, I can say it. Like, like, what's something that you do every day that you know, if I do this, my legs are going to spasm? For example, getting in the shower, you said? Like for example, like right now, like I put one leg off, yeah, and I got one leg on the thing, like stretch it out. Okay. If I put my leg on there, it, it it'll be jumping sometimes. Okay. I'm spasm right now, like like my hip, like jumping up, like pushing up. Do you feel like cold weather makes it worse? Cold weather, yeah. Especially like would I would my injury be at the yeah. cold water? I mean the cold weather, like I don't know it. it it, it's like this cold weather up here in Indiana. It's like it goes to the bone. It hurts. <sighs> like I gotta stay, yeah. I gotta stay warm and taking okay. Um, on with them, I ain't pills and stuff like okay to stay keep my body right. Mm. And you That's should. I, I can't, I can't, yeah. I can't deal with too much of this cold, man. <laughs> like for example, like when they get cold, I know like what what I go through. Yeah. I gotta use the bathroom a lot. Oh, okay. You, 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 I got, I got, I got like you got to pee more. Mm. And in the home state, you know what I'm saying? Okay. That it, 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 that was right by the time I was going to chiropractic. Like, man, I need that chiropractor. That was another reason. Mm-hmm. That cold was okay. Okay, now, you know, you say you was in the hospital for 31 days. How long after? You getting up as far as like the next day after you get shot, how long does it take for you to start therapy? Well, I, I started my, my therapy started when I got there, I was I was on that schedule already. Oh wow. Oh, like damn. before they before they hot 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 um Jackson Memorial Hospital were like when you went in, in, in that they already before you leave out that door, they got the schedules, they got everything planned out for you soon mm-hmm. off the rip. If you need somebody coming to your house, your insurance take care of it, then okay. do it. Okay. So transitioning from the hospital back home, you know, back to going home, it was easy for you? Yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it was real easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I first went home, because we had to move from, we was upstairs, so my wife, my mm-hmm. pregnant wife, mm-hmm. yeah, she was moving first. Yeah. Oh my Down god! Like, wow. Her mama, I mean, her mama, daddy, and uh, her brother did help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, 
but yeah, they moved. I, I tell what she, yeah, she did that. I, 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 I my hat to women. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Shout, shout out, out to, to wifey. Look, shout out to the wives everywhere, and shout out to the caregivers everywhere, because I feel like that that's one thing that we don't really touch on as much, because we kind of get lost in the fact that you know, like we get lost in the person with the spinal cord injury, but at the same time, we really don't. I would say highlight as far like everybody else, you know, because we think that the person with the SEI injury like ha- has it the worst, but you don't realize that the people around them are also going through something as well, you know, because I know it, as much as I might struggle with being paralyzed, you know, I really can't imagine how my wife actually feels, you know, being with somebody that's paralyzed because, you know, she does have to take on a little bit more than the average spouse. You know, or average caregiver because she is the person that I'm married to, and she's also married to somebody in the wheelchair. So, you know, she gets out, she pumps the gas. You know, yes, it does make me feel some type of way. Like, I feel hurt when people look at her and then they look at me because, you know, people don't really look at you like, oh man, that guy's in the wheelchair because you re- like everybody thinks that people in wheelchairs are old. You know, so whenever yeah. somebody look at her pumping gas and then they look at me, I kind of feel hurt and I feel down in a way. And I don't know how it feels on her. Honestly, for hey, me, now I'm j- I just smile. Oh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. As you said that, we did a video yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. And we, we like, we recorded it. She recorded me while I go in the gas station. Like, and she's like, man, this is why I got to pump gas. Like, she, people got to see that, like, you feel what I'm saying? Not it's, it still ain't an excuse. Us in the um, wheelchair, we can get out, but it's like it's a longer process. Exactly. Versus mm-hmm. go ahead, go pump the gas and, yeah. and go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But and I feel yeah, like people look, look, look at us like because we're in wheelchair, they look different, whatever this yeah. and that. That that's another thing that made me like how, how like despite people look at me, I feel like okay. I put myself in the underdogs too. Like, yeah. man, I, I I walk out with my chest like, yeah, man, yeah, I'm in a wheelchair, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm gonna live my best life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to run who's around you. I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm like competitive a little bit. Like, I, I'm gonna do this. I yeah. can do this. If I can't do it, then I ask for help. Okay, that, that that's just how I am. Like, my wife like, you want to get the season? Like, nah, I got it. I got it. Knocked everything down. Hey, I got it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> to try for myself I don't yeah. want you, know, you want people all feeling sorry for you and yeah. stuff like that I, I I don't want that you feel me like nah I feel you I feel you I want to die first you mm. see me me the only person that I feel like I would ask for help is my wife like I wouldn't ask yeah. anybody for help if look if I need help with some. I'm going to ask my wife, but if she ain't around and ain't nobody else there, I'm damn sure going to try to do it myself, all right? But if I can't do it, it gets to a point where I got to kind of understand, and then I do have to ask for help. But I know it it takes a little bit longer for me to ask for help because of my ego and my pride. And I feel like being paralyzed is something, like, that was one thing that was beneficial that I feel like that I learned was how to put my pride and ego aside sometimes and kind of ask for help. So you're right. Mm-hmm. See, that I, I'm still working on that. I, Me too. I'm still working on that. Like that's all because it's it's like like for example my wife she work like right now. She at work right now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? She work, she cook. It's to the point that I, I try to step in and try to cook. Yeah. She sing. I be cleaning up and it, 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 it's like I don't, it's like, hey, she, she, she does it all. Mm-hmm. So it's like, another thing will push me hard. Like, man, no, I got it, baby. Like, she already doing a lot. Oh, I'm coming, she's coming home and she's yeah. tired. I'm trying to, you know what I mean? Okay. Okay, now, who, okay, so again, you're in a hospital 31 days. How much longer after you leave the hospital does your wife actually end up giving birth? I left. You said she was eight months. She was eight months. Yeah. Yeah. She dropped. She dropped. Um, sorry. We had went for a checkup. Mm-hmm. It was a day of her checkup. 
we went. They said you can't go home now. Oh. They about to come. You dilate. Damn. So, so it's like, oh, I'm at the hospital. They know I crashed the car, so I gotta wait till her mama, or her daddy come pick me up to take me home. Mm-hmm. But I stayed at the hospital till, hey, I know something, and they like, oh well, she ain't gonna have it tonight, so you have to leave. It's to the point, like, man. Bump that, hey, look, I pulled his wheelchair, you know, you can pull our chair backwards and put my leg in the chair, body shift side to side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how bad I wanted to be there, but, hey, man, he like, nah, go home, you're going to be good. So yeah. I just went home. It's to the point, I caught the bus up there. That thing, you know, but the stuff about, she been there like a good three to four days, and okay. that thing, you know, there goes sorrow. She's here. Okay. I had, I had oh. took her out, held her. Yeah. All bloody. <laughs> it's like, okay. It's like it's like wow, like like it's, it's like wow, like mm-hmm. that's my motivation. Like that 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 was keeping me. I'm what what I don't know what I be doing without her. Nah, I don't know. it's just in me. Like not not trying to say that if I wasn't with her, if I had no child, I still wouldn't. I couldn't lay down, but I'm still yeah. in the street. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. God, God really like. God's son, my wife, and my life for a reason because I'm mm-hmm. still in the street. Yeah. That okay. don't stop nothing. You're about to become a father, right? But now you end up paralyzed. Mentally, how does that feel like? Mentally, what was you going through? Mentally, out of one to ten, kid being great, I was at a, I'm going to say, a, a four. Four. I'm like, man, how I'm gonna provide for my family. Yeah. That was the main thing. Like, I hey, you need money to take care of your family. Yeah. By the grace of God, when I, cause it's like to the point that I, I had I had to pull back from the game. I had to pull back from the game. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Cause mm-hmm. going around newborn babies nowadays, niggas, niggas shooting up you and the kids now. You feel me? Yeah. They ain't thinking about. Oh, the kids and other, they just want to just get their man and everybody with them. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's another reason I had to lay back. And all the money I hustled up, it's the crazy thing about it. I had enough money to hold my family down until my wife went back to work. Mm. So I was okay. Yeah. I had money. It, it was same thinking through my head. You feel me? So, but. Mentally, I was like, "Huh," but I thank God we had what we needed to get through it. Mm-hmm. Okay. The hustle is not in vain. You going through your SEI injury now. You becoming a father. When do you feel like your mindset changes as far as like you know what? I need to get up out these streets and you know do something better. That really, really changed when my daughter came, like when when she had that baby. It, it had to change. Like things yeah. had to change. Mm-hmm. I started to go to church. Mm. I've been going to church in there. Yeah. Nope, nope, no. Nope. I started going to church. Okay. Like little changes like this and like trying to tweak this and tweak mm. that. I had to get something right. I had to, and I was like, this disability check is not enough. Yeah. It's it, it, to the point, I ain't gonna lie. I did backslid and went back to like, I'm just gonna deal with the weed. I ain't gonna mess with the other stuff. Mm. So I've been like selling weed here, getting people packs and stuff, like keeping a little money coming in. You feel me? Yeah. And I'm like, I gotta let it all go because at the end of the day, you know what this lifestyle brings. Whether small or yeah. big, you still gonna bring that negative energy to your point though. Mm-hmm. So I had to let it go. I had to. I went to the Lord. Lord, help me, Lord. Like show me the way. You said in your word, knock me in all your ways. Yeah. He said, knock me in all your ways. And he said, direct that path. So I'm acknowledge you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Mm-hmm. You, I know, I know you ain't you ain't gonna leave me at this point. You said I would never leave you nor forsake you. So I kept my trust in God. Yeah. And, and from now I just kept my trust in God. And and that's all I could do. Mm-hmm. And, and and 
That's all I could do. Keep it in God. Okay, so from the time that you leave the hospital, how long is it until you actually end up moving to Indiana? Whoa. So I think when I get oh. Seven years later. Oh, 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 damn. Okay, so you was there for so a little I minute. I've been in Miami for seven years mm-hmm. after I've been shot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also I feel like that that's one thing that we don't really get to talk about enough is that disability check. All right. I don't know anywhere in the United States where you could really live off a disability check comfortably or even live off at all. Like I don't even know nowhere where you could pay rent with a disability check. Like it's damn near impossible, especially with inflation going on right now. You know, so that's something that I feel like that it needs to be discussed a lot more because it does help in a way, but for somebody who can't work at all, it's it's gonna be damn near impossible to get by. It's impossible. That that, that like like right now, YouTube YouTube has been entrepreneur whether people know it or not. I had yeah. to pick we had to pick it, it, it's like we already planned we ain't look at YouTube making money as I explained earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But YouTube, like right now, like I said, I got um doing on um, Club Secret. You feel me? Mm-hmm. That's another income. Yeah. Um, and I I be looking at other things. I I do four X too. I got four X going up too. Like I, I do I does a little talking about how to how to market. Now I'm not playing with my money. I'm letting my money sit to yeah to things get right because mm-hmm. it's like you go in there like. It's an arm and a leg. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, that money can drop in a day. You know, like you might get some of them Colombian pesos and, you, you know, uh, you might try to revert it back to the dollar. It might be a little different. You know, a lot different yeah. now. So, yeah. I, I, like, I, 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 be, I be doing a lot of your, um, I, I do a lot of um, um, Australia money. I be, I be going over there. Mm. Flipping out my uh, American money into uh, uh, Australia money, flipping that and hitting over there. You feel me? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, and you want to know what? That's something that we kind of need to discuss as well. Is you know, like for somebody in a wheelchair, it's not over. All right? you just got to find ways how to do things. You know, like you said, you're doing YouTube, you're doing Forex, you know, you're doing the club secret stuff. You know, for me, anything that I was wanting to do when it came to YouTube, I wanted to make sure it was something that I could do from the house. All right, because, you know, yeah, I could do stuff where I'm doing vlogs and stuff like that here and there, but I wanted the core things that we did to be done at the house to really just make it easier, not on just my wife, but, you know, on me as well, because it does take a lot of energy and effort going out there, getting your wheelchair out there, having a vlog, you know, trying to get them right angles. You know, look, for somebody who's walking, vlogging isn't, you know, the easiest, you know, so just imagine somebody being in a wheelchair. You know, you being with somebody that's in the wood, like it's a lot different. So anything that I try to do, and I also commend you because, you know, you said that you're doing the mukbangs. I'm pretty sure there's a little percentage of, of both of y'all that's doing the mukbangs because it's really convenient for you to do it at your house. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. these podcasts are easy for me to do at the house versus having to go all these different places where, you know, anything can happen. Wheelchair can go down. You know, cushion can pop. You know, I went to Vegas, yeah. and my cushion exploded. <laughs> Never had that happen. It popped like, open. Yeah, it oh, exploded. That's the first time seeing that one. Bruh, <laughs> oh. What's the worst thing you feel like that you've had happen to you as far as, like, when it came to your wheelchair? The worst thing happened to me, my own, my, 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 my own, the back of what I wheel had broke off like the, the rail thing when you twist the whole thing broke off like what and like my, my tire walked so i'm going like this like how i'm gonna get around like damn i had to wait i had to sit on the couch mm. but man it's like man it was miserable because i couldn't go nowhere i couldn't do nothing yeah like i can't do nothing yeah. and another thing the back of my wheelchair the thing broke off. The whole back broke off. I said, I don't know how that happened, but it broke off. What the heck? So, 
and it's like I couldn't go nowhere. I'm yeah. stuck in the house, can't do nothing. Mm-hmm. But it, it, that, that's a miserable feeling, man. That, that's why, like, right now, I need to go get my, I need to go on um, get my tires changed. Like, people got to come, my insurance people got to pay for the tires. So yeah. It started. I started seeing that thread because I don't get the one with the air in the tire. Mm-hmm. So I'd be like, man, knowing me, I'd be like to jump off the the pump and just jump in the car, look yeah. off. Mm-hmm. So you got know, to, you got to, you got to do a little little show. People be watching, so you got to like yeah. move with it. Like you feel me? I yeah. I just think I'd be the dude off of um boys in the hood. Oh <laughs> shit! Yeah. Hey, look, what's so crazy is we literally just watched that movie the other day, and also too, that was the last movie I watched before I got paralyzed. Was Boys in the Hood? Wow! But when it's sh- on the scene when Ricky gets shot, because everybody know there's somebody in a wheelchair that's in the movie, right? On the yeah. scene where he gets shot, when they pull up, I was thinking that the guy in the wheelchair, like they were gonna try to help him out, but he ends up coming from down the alley. He don't hop out the car. He comes from he wheels there from down the alley. So that was something that I was, you know, paying attention and wanted to look at. Cause I was like, cause I know he gets out the car. But I was like, how does he get out the car? But when I look back at it, he never gets out the car. He comes from down the alley. Cause you know, you know, when you get out the car with your wheelchair, you know, like, you gotta put your wheelchair together and shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a process. I, exactly. I was <laughs> curious about that. But that's something. If you ever watch it again, make sure you look at that part. When Ricky gets shot and whenever the brother put up, when Ice Cube pulls up, the dude that's in the wheelchair comes from down the alley. He don't pull up with them in the inside the car. He already will a yeah. Yeah. He be moving. Yeah, exactly. I ain't gonna lie, he the one who motivated me going downstairs, to tell you the truth. <laughs> okay. I, I remember the first time I flipped out the chair, I had the big bogey chair. Ooh. So the first chair to see the custom chair. Yeah. Well, I flipped, boy, I was embarrassed. I ain't, I ain't popping with it for some months. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Were you oh. out in public? My wife was embarrassed. I ain't going to lie, my wife was embarrassed. Uh-huh. Like, see, I told you stop popping with me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see... What's so crazy is I've never felt popping a wheelie yet. I fell out my chair, but it was it was when we was at the VA and yeah. we were trying to hurry up and like you know the you know right when you about to come to a crosswalk a crosswalk those little yeah. those little bubbles that be like on the ground to kind of like slow somebody down or something like that. Yeah. My tire hit one of those and I just went flying for it. Just flew out my wheelchair. Wow. Yeah, man. My the front tire Yup, yup, it, 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 it hit that little hump, and I just went flying for it. You were going too fast. I we was. were. We, I was like, slow down, and I, all I can see you is just rolling really, really fast, and then you hit the little bumps right mm-hmm. there on the crosswalk, Yeah, and I see you flying forward. I was like, oh, no. I was like, <laughs> in front of everybody. Yeah. So now I'm like trying to, I'm like, oh, my gosh, let me hurry up, get you back in your chair. I, I, know, everybody, I know everybody panicking like, oh, my gosh. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's looking. Bro, that shit was embarrassing. You know, I'm just it's like, oh, gosh. I ain't going to lie, Paul, not, <laughs> hey, Paul, not the wheelchair is embarrassing. It, oh, de- it definitely is. In public, it is. That's why it only happened that That's one time. Hell yeah. I'm on my yeah. left one. Well, my my um, wife nephew. I let him wheel my chair. He's like, oh, wheel me. That boy hit the ground so fast. I ain't never seen nobody hit the ground that fast. <laughs> That's crazy. But then, you know, a person who don't be in the wheelchair, they don't understand the limits. You can't just live. It, it ain't that easy. Yeah. Well, you, you should, they don't understand that. Us doing the willy is a balancing thing because we're dealing with dead weight. You know, when you can't feel your legs as much, it's dead weight. So you kind of balance it out. But when, but for them, they can feel their legs. So when they go to go pop the willy, it automatically throws them off bounce to where they think that they're going to fall back and they actually fall back. I really don't recommend anybody to play with a wheelchair because for me, you know, when she sits in my, when she sits in my back of wheelchair, I try to tell her like not to because it's not a good like to me. It's just not a good look. It like it doesn't it doesn't really bring the the best. I would say like outlook when I see you in my wheelchair. Like I feel bad. Like like it's something I wouldn't want to see you in. You know what I mean? So I mean, yeah, another thing too. As you said that you never heard a saying they said don't play with precious. Yep, play the wheelchair. And the crazy thing, I played with the crutches one upon a time. The next, and it was right by the time a dolphin player got killed over the 
my where I used to be. He was a retired Dolphin Dolphin player. I forgot the name of his name. But he got killed over there by the projects I was by. Yeah. And I'm playing with crutches and I play like I feel. Oh, people like, oh my God, you're okay, okay, I'm okay, okay. And it's like I'm playing. The next day, you know, I sprung my ankle. Oh Ooh. my God. I fractured yeah. my ankle. It does, look, it does happen like that. It does happen that's like why that. Like playing, playing with wheelchairs and stuff. That's why I tell my daughter. My daughter like to quick jump up. Like when I be live, mm. like when we live stream on our channel, we go live every like Sundays. So mm-hmm. but my daughter always want to get in my chair. Get out of my chair. Go go sit on the on other chair. Like mm-hmm. I want to stand with it. Like yeah. Okay. I I do have a question. So, um, growing up. With your, you know, raising your daughter, did she ever ask you what happened, or did you ever explain to her what happened, well, why you're in a wheelchair? Did she ever wonder or is curious? Well, it's like, all right, when I explained it to, well, when the time I explained it, she was like five, four, five years old when I explained it to her. Mm-hmm. But other than that, it's like it was a bond, like. My daughter, like, cause you know, it's a bar back out there. Yeah. You climb on my neck, hold on my neck. And I will. Like that, that, that what we used to do. Like, go to the store, go to the store. She jump on the back, hold on my neck. And mm-hmm. I just will. She hold on tight, or sometimes she turn my lap, and I will. Her. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just like me being in chest. She, she like to help me push me stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like it was not. It to her, it was a normal norm to her. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Always see me in the chair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all my all my you feel me all all her life. Yeah, so it's yeah. like I ain't really had to explain it to her. Like, so she's like, "What happened?" Like, mm-hmm. and I told you I've been shot and stuff. Like, like now she know because I did a video and everything. Yeah. Oh, okay. About how I got shot on the mm-hmm. channel. So, okay. Yeah. Now, you know, also for the people out there and me as well because I'm not a father yet, but what do you feel was the hardest thing that you had to deal with when it came to your SEI injury and then also being a father? The hardest thing it was keeping up. Like, because one time she ran down in the streets and and I had to literally, like, no, she did it twice because she was a little baby. So mm-hmm. yeah. she ran down the street. I had to, I had to, I had to literally. Like, chase her down. I had to, I don't know. I think it was an angel pushed me. Mm-hmm. I had to jump. She was about to jump in the main street. Mm-hmm. Go out the apartment to jump on the main, like, highway street. Mm-hmm. I had jumped out the chair and grabbed her. I don't know how I went from the chair to way over there. That had to be an angel who pushed me because my legs ain't working. Yeah. So, I grabbed her. I, my wife see me get, and my wife just pulled up. Like, what you doing on the ground? What the baby in? She's all the way in the street. Damn. You know how little kids just run? Just mm-hmm. to run? That's why I don't like the... You been in the wheelchair? Don't take the kids, especially by the street. Because they're going to... First thing they react to is run. We playing. They think it's a game. They don't yeah. understand the danger. Yeah. And the second time, a, a, a kid that... Like I said, the hardest part is chasing a child in a wheelchair trying to... Mm-hmm. Trying to prevent them from hitting sun or running in the street. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, and that's what's crazy is that's something that I also think about too. You know, like I wonder, you know, like say she leaves and I'm with the child, you know, and you know, like the kid, like j- just so happens to make it outside and then start running. Like how how, how am I going to be able to react to it? You know, as far as like being in that situation and then trying to get to the child as well. So, like, that's something that I think about. And, you know, I ain't going to say that it's like an insecurity because it's not something that I went through, but it, it's something that I I really do think about as far as, like, 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 damn, like, am I ready to be a father with this SCI injury? Like, it's just something that I constantly now, think I'm, about. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Hey, nobody can prepare having a kid. Yeah. As, as from the series, like, it seems like you may, oh, let me map this out, then we're going to try this. Mm-hmm. It's just how, just how you did this. Yeah. Learning along the way. Like, we got mm-hmm. to figure it out. 
Yeah. It's to the point that I prevent Star from running and stuff. Mm. Hey, I, I tell her, look, listen, such and such, such and such, this is what it is. Like, he's listening. So yeah. when she did that them two times, she ain't, I ain't had no problem with that no more. Because mm. I talked to her and she understood. Yeah. Like not, like nowadays kids, kids understand now. You be surprised now. Like mm-hmm. so after them two on um, point, she ain't never did it no more. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Hey, you wanna run, run up and down here. Don't go out there. You already know mm-hmm. it. That's pop pop. So she got that to her mind, like she ain't never do that no more. And do you feel like that she had to mature a lot faster than most kids with her having a dad with the SEI injury? Well, she, she did. Yeah, she, I could say she, because another thing, too, what I noticed, she take up for, like, like kids getting bullied or yeah. kicked on. Yes. She take up for people quick. Like, it been to the point she got in trouble at school for taking up for a kid that another kid was messing with. Mm-hmm. So, she she learned, she she, she did mature on, on that, like, yeah. taking up for people who, who can't, Take up for themselves. Mm-hmm. Is there any advice that you would give to anybody out there who's becoming a father in a wheelchair? Um, just any advice that you would, you wish you also had. As, as my advice would be, um, don't let nobody tell you you can't do this. For as raising a kid, be attentive. Oh, you're going to be attentive anyway. Um, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to see, see how I can say it. All right. I don't know. Just just, just spend time with your kid. Teach your kid. Train your child. Yeah. How you, you feel me? Train your child the right way. Um, I know that thing being a part of the wheelchair. Keep a bond with your children. Listen to your children. Yeah. Um. It, it, it's mainly about bond. Mm-hmm. You have that. You get that bond with your child. You spend time with your child. Don't don't be to the like. Because I can say one thing about me and my daughter. We spend a lot of time talking, mm-hmm. doing okay. this, and doing this. Let's read this book and stuff like. Spend time with your children. Yeah. Like spend time on the phone. Yeah. Going to metallic, going to corner, spend some time. You got to spend time and communicate and get that get that bond. When you get that bond, it's like everything gonna go accordingly. You feel me? She gonna listen mm-hmm. to you, or he gonna listen to you. So I like to say that bond, have that bond with your child. Yeah. And if you need help, hey, ask for help. Cause I, I I was like real prideful on some things, mm-hmm. but I'm starting to learn more. Ask for help if you need help. You said it was seven years after your SEI injury that you end up leaving Miami to go to Indiana, right? Yeah. At what point do you say to yourself, you know what, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel? Like I said, we, me and my wife looked at Candy. We were like, oh, we can do that. Yeah. But we didn't know they can get paid for it. Mm-hmm. We wanted. Cause like I said, we're having a child, mm-hmm. and we want to have memories. So when she looks yeah. back, she always sees this: my mom and my daddy. If God forbid, we pass away, oh, or okay. we pick up whatever. Like everybody can always go back. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's 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 picture is rolling. It was, I, yeah. I, matter of fact, our name was N and J Blog. Okay, that was our name. Was me mm-hmm. and Jason Blog. Uh-huh. So my okay. wife came up with the name Picture Us Rolling. Yeah. Yeah, picture us rolling. I like, like that. Rolling in the world, yeah, picture us That's, rolling. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, like, oh, so it, it it just it came from there. So also more but picture us rolling. Picture us going to mm-hmm. Ohio or picture us mm-hmm. going to Hawaii or you know? mm-hmm. picture us going to Miami. Mm-hmm. So, oh picture us going to Indiana. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Because I feel I like, like it. I already know starting a YouTube channel is hard. Mm-hmm. So I know the grind. You know, I I, I think I seen today y'all at like uh, 18,700 subscribers, I think. Mm-hmm. So I know, I look, I, bro, I know what it take to get to a thousand. Look, I know, I know what it take to get to a hundred. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> all right, I know what it takes to get to a thousand. Hey, I, so you, I, I know you was running out of time. Oh, you gotta get a hundred subscribers in order to start getting paid. That's when we started. Yes, back in the day. Back in the day, back in the day, it was just you had to get a thousand subscribers in order to monetize your channel. You didn't have to get the the watch hours and everything. It was just a thousand subscribers. That was it. But now, now you gotta get. I started when they said you just need a hundred subscribers, one hundred, and you certify. And Ooh. I had to do the access that, account. That you see, I don't know. They must have changed that around, like afterwards. But I started. Ooh, I started. I, I think I started my YouTube channel in twenty. I think I started this YouTube channel in 2013, 2013, 2014. And at that yeah, time, yeah. And at I that, remember. I remember y'all. Well, no, well, no. It was just me at first. Mm -hmm. All right. So what happened is when I started the YouTube channel, I was really big on marijuana at the time because, like I said, it helped me in all aspects. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start a YouTube channel growing weed on there. So that's kind of how I started. And then once we moved to California, I'm like, you know what? I want to do some vlogs. You know, like I was watching vloggers and everything. I was watching a dude named Fousey Tube. Right, he was doing all types of vlogs in LA and stuff like that. I was like, you know what, man? When I moved to California, I'm gonna start doing that. So I started Snapchatting every day, right? And look, at this time, I ain't had nobody but her watching my Snapchats. And look, she, hey, look, she would be trying to like play me, like you know, like oh, oh, look, you ain't got nobody watching your Snapchats, and I didn't. You know, she had like 21 people watching her. I'm like, damn, and I only got one person watching my, but I got like 30 stories up. You know what I mean? And then gradually, once we end up moving to, uh, gradually once we end up, you know, moving to California and you know, like connecting with other YouTubers and stuff like that, you know, the numbers started growing, uh, going up. And I started doing vlogs and stuff like that. So you know, it, look, it's a process. All right, most of the time, most of the time, you don't end off doing what you started doing. You know, most of the time, your name gonna change. Yeah, your name gonna change along the way. It happens. It's a process. All right, you gotta find what works for you. You gotta find that little niche. You know that you can really get into and make great videos for the people to watch out there. You know what I mean? So, okay, so you started your YouTube channel in Miami. You moved to Indiana. What was that process like for y'all? That process, man. When we moved, to, when we moved to Indiana, yeah, it was to the point that it's like our lease is up, twelve hundred dollars was the rent, mm. and it's like we left everything. We only brought our clothes. Not for papers. Okay. That's it. Damn. Pack that car up. We signed Ooh. fixture. 1.5 or 1.8. And we came back from Miami all the way to Indiana. Y'all was determined. Mm-hmm. It's like the cost of living was too high. My yeah. wife ain't wanting to come up here. So I was mm -hmm. like, man, we might as well go up there. Because it's like, mm -hmm. how we going to work? We going back to... We've been the homeless shelter before too. Mm. I, I said that on my channel too, but we've been the homeless shelter. We've been at the bottom of the barrel, man. God been with us at the bottom. Yeah. He, ain't, he ain't leave us at the bottom. I know he ain't gonna leave us. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. So we, we exactly. came up here, got us a place, two bedroom, one bath. So mm -hmm. and we made it work. So here I am now. Okay. Five years later. <laughs> okay, so why Indiana out of all places? Oh, my wife used to stay stay here in Indiana. Okay. The cost of living in the Midwest is more cheap. Mm -hmm. mm. So that was the reason why we came and she knew this area and knew people here. So yeah. getting the job was nothing for her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And doing what we had to do, it, 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 it's to the point that I thank God for this lady because I built my credit. Mm-hmm. She got her. Uh, she got her job right now. To be honest, she's working at Walmart. You feel me? Okay. But she's getting paid deep. She's getting mm -hmm. paid good. Mm -hmm. So, and before this, she was at um child care, like working mm -hmm. at her own. I can say with kids daycare. Yeah. She's okay. Working at daycare, but she's like, man, I'm tired of you. Got to go to a meeting every week and got to learn this. You got to get your license doing this, and it's too much. So yeah. Went ahead, went to um, a Walmart. So mm. right now, that's what we're doing right now. Hey, hey look, I mean, you got to find a way. 
You got to find a way. It's to the point. Right there, I told my wife, hey, look, this is a one five year plan. You ain't going to be working no more after this. Yeah. So. Look, just keep going. The numbers going to keep going up. Keep pushing out that content. You know, be consistent. Stay on them people's necks. You know what I mean? And look, just keep pushing out that good content. Mm-hmm. All right. People, look, people love mukbangs. I, I like mukbangs. All right. Same here. And I definitely like doing them too. I definitely like doing them too. So, you know, like I got a question for you as well when it comes to the mukbangs. All right. Because I don't really have to deal with it. But you, you know what? I deal with it in a way when it comes to acid reflex. But I know some people talk about, man, you know, after my SCI injury, I, I like to stay away from certain foods. Now, when it comes to, you know, you and your wife doing mukbangs, do you feel like that you have to avoid certain foods because of your SEI injury? No, nah, man, we eat what we want to eat. Oh, like are you talking it. about avoid some food? Well, like... What, I'll be honest with you, we, we, we try to eat reasonable. Okay. We, we push back from a lot of salt. Okay. But okay. in some days, if we want something, we're going to eat it. Yeah. But when, after that, hey, we put to get back on, hey... Bacon it, bacon chicken, fish. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We love all everything we eat. Mm-hmm. But like last thing we did, we did some fried chicken. Like, that was that was just a day of like, so hey, I want some fried chicken. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, trust me. Look, I be seeing the white throw down over there. All right, mm-hmm. I be seeing it coming up with some yeah. stuff now. All right, I be seeing it now. Same I be here. seeing it now. Okay. Oh yeah, my wife just she she be cooking. She do cooking my way. You're right. I, I see. I forgot about cooking my way, mm-hmm. but she be going down. Yeah, so, yeah. Trust me. The people out there watching. Right yeah. Mm-hmm. If you go look at your YouTube channel, you can see the child really not stationary. Like you say, y'all do vlogs as well, right? And I seen the vlog where y'all went to Miami. All right, now. Yeah. For the people out there, how do you feel like it is for you? traveling on the airplane and stuff like that because i know how it is but some people are afraid to travel some people they just don't want to travel because they don't know how they don't know what to expect so for the people out there that want to travel but they're a little bit afraid what advice can you give for them hey um about traveling yeah it's like this you want to get on the bus or you want to drive yeah be long but get on the plane all you gotta do is if you if you like get nauseous or anything, take some nauseous pill or get you get some night quill or some day quill or what well, mm-hmm. night quill or something to put you to sleep and get on the plane and that'd be it. Or like I know some people might hey, let me get a couple of drinks, then I fall asleep on the flight or whatever. Yeah. That's that's how some people do it. Me, I say I just do it. Like we got one life to live. That's you know exactly. I look at it like traveling. Traveling is like a book. Yeah. If you don't go nowhere, that book is always closed. You just on one page or you just on, on that closed book. But when you travel, you, oh man, I've been here. Oh, I've been to Vegas. Oh, I've been here. Oh, mm-hmm. I've been here. Like, dang, exactly. Got my life to live. Why not? Exactly. You know what? That's how I look at it too. All right. Look, sometimes you just got to get it done. No matter, no matter what, like no matter the consequences. It's, you know, say you have an accident and everything. Look, shit happens, all right? But it's on you to really do what you need to do in order to be able to go out there and have fun. That's, you know, if, you know, for a lot of people out there, you know, like they ask me, hey, my man, how can I get my bio care together? Or, man, look, mentally, I just don't know if I can, you know, do the, do the digital stimulation aspect of bio care. And I try to tell them, look, you know, you see me out here, you see me going out, you see me go to Costco, you see us traveling to Columbia, different stuff like that. In order for me to be able to do that, I had to go through exactly what you're going through now, but I also had to go through the process of getting my shit together, all right? I had to get on the schedule, all right? I had to do bow care. I had to do the digital stimulation. I didn't want to do that shit at first. I didn't want to. Like, I was against I I couldn't, I, I, I really couldn't fathom having to do that, all right? It, exactly exactly i had to do that so so for everybody out there in order for me to really be able to do the stuff that y'all see on my instagram the stuff that y'all see on our youtube you right i had to get some type of discipline and i had to really get on my shit and do what i had to do in order to be able to do what i wanted to do 
All right. So, so for me, when I travel I gotta, on the, I gotta vote. what happened? You got to do what others want to have what others can't. Exactly. Exactly. So for me, when I go to traveling on the airplane, right? I always make sure I got one of my cushions. Look, look, I got the cushions dropping soon, all right? I got some hand controls dropping, and I got some cushions dropping. But I also make sure whenever I book my ticket, I also make sure to put it inside the information uh, aisle chair needed. So for me, I'm in a wheelchair, so I need an aisle chair. Like you said, that's that. Uh, what was it? What did you call it? What was the chair? That you, yeah, the Hannibal Lecter chair where they strap you in. It's mm -hmm. like a six point harness. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So they strap you in there. But I also, but I also make sure I cast right before I get on the plane, right? So I cast before I get on the plane. And one thing I try to do is I like to do, I like to do red eyes, and I like to do red eyes. So re like, say we traveling somewhere, I like to do the red eyes because I'm able to keep up with my schedule a lot easier. So if we travel at night, I'm still on that nighttime schedule. You know what I mean? Versus traveling during the day, I might mess up because I might have to do bowel care a little bit earlier than you know than normal. That's why I like to travel at night. So that way, whenever we get to our destination, you know, when we do what we got to do, I do bowel care. If we want to take a nap, we take a nap. Or if we want to just get going, we just get going. Yeah, I, I, I make sure I have the pen though. Traveling, mm -hmm. okay. I, got, I, I, don't, I don't like them. Because mm -hmm. to be honest, I don't use the pen. Only okay. when I travel. Okay. That's the only time I use the pen. And, and and for me, the the only time I use a leg bag is when I get on the plane. So for instance, I don't use leg bags at all. I, I need to use that. I ain't think about that. Yeah, so so like so like for me, my bow care and my cabin schedule is on what well, as far as my bow care, it's on point it's really on point to it's on schedule. Yeah, it's Same on time, schedule to the point day. where I know I ain't gonna use a bathroom when I get on this plane. Like I know, like I know, I, like I'm good. All right, but we all know anything can happen when it comes to peeing. You feel me? So when I, but I also make sure I cal like I said, I calf before the plane ride, and then I'll just put on a leg bag so that way, if I want to drink on the plane or something like that, I can drink without having to worry about having a cap because these planes ain't really handicap accessible. You know, for you to really go to the bathroom like that. All right, have time. Your wheelchair is under the plane. It ain't nowhere near you. Yeah. You know, so that's what I try to recommend for people. You got to have discipline. You got to get on the schedule. All right. You, look, you got to do it and able to be able to do what you want to do. All right. So that's pretty much what I recommend for people out there. Now, are you driving? No, I'm not driving, but I am in the process of getting that. You feel me? Okay. That, that, see. Out of all things I accomplish, I accomplish everything else when it comes down to doing what I what a, what a wheelchair as a wheelchair life. Okay, but I did not drive. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like I I I need to get to drive. Even my homeboy got, hey man, look, you can take a scan in my car. Yeah, I'm like nah, bro. Like no, like I got I got used to being choked around. Like mm. hey, I got to change that. Yeah, and I feel that, like that, 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 that's another goal I'm attacking right now. And you know, for me, at first, she was driving me around for like the first couple of years. And you know, once I finally got that independence back of being able to drive for myself and go places by myself, and really just getting up and being able to go, man, that was one of the biggest confidence boosters I could have ever asked for. You know, because now I'm able to just get up and go. You know, but for the most part, we do travel together. You know, like she's always with me and everything like that. But just having that freedom of just being able to get up and go was just so liberating for me after my SAI injury. So trust me, I already know. I already know how it is for you right now, as far as you know, not being able to drive right now. But trust me, I trust me. You work on it, you gonna get there. Like me, I had to work on it too. It, it was so many obstacles, you know, for me when it came to actually being able to, you know. Do the programs to where I get certified on on the hand controls. Yeah, you know, so yeah. that was a process in itself. So, I, so I, trust me, I already know how it is for you. So, but trust me, look, I I already know how you gonna feel whenever it comes to driving again. And look, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for It'd you. It'd be cool I, if you shared it on your YouTube channel as well. I was just about to say that. Oh, yeah. oh, hey. <laughs> We document every that. That's one of, I'm documenting everything. Yeah. <laughs> you got to. Hey, Do this, it. This, this this our life story. It's like mm -hmm. it's like it, it, yeah, it's our life story. It's something that 
for example, for those in the future, those who paralyzed and all that, hey man, how to do this? I don't know how to do this. I don't mm-hmm. know how to do that. Yeah. Now it's it's more stuff how to like as wheelchairs and stuff like that. I've been yeah. seeing videos like, hey, how to pump gas or how to call the people to the gas from the helping fish. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I did a video on that like a few years ago on the pumping gas and and also I did a video on the um on the little buttons cuz most of the time you press them buttons it don't work. It don't work. They it don't, don't do work. No, it don't. It don't. And that's one thing that we kind of need to work on too. We need to work on, you know, getting some of this stuff for disabled people actually, you know, working for us because look, I be a little pissed off. Well, one, that damn button is damn far as as far as hell away, you know, to press it, it need to be yep. something right there to where you can press it from the car. You know what I mean? And then somebody come out there and help you. And half the time, these gas stations really only have one attendant, so they really kind of can't because they can't really leave the store like that. So, I mean, it's, it's just like a little things that they need to, you know, work on. So, that's it now. It, 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 they need to, like, 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 for example, like, where I'm at right now, it's an older te- <clears throat> it, They need to upgrade a lot of stuff. Like, yeah. Every, I feel that's like every wheelchair has wheelchair chest on chest now. Yeah. That's another thing we all need to push. Because mm-hmm. despite, you feel what I'm saying, even though some people make them walk, it's older people like who use wheelchairs. They can't walk. They can't stand too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. And you know what's... Some places need to have more handicap parking as well because I feel like sometimes it's only like one or two spots. Like they need to have a little bit more handicap, you know, parking. But they need a whole road. They, hell yeah, hell yeah. Now, See, but another thing I learned too, it, it's people out here to know how to get handicap six. They ain't even handicap. Oh that, hell yeah, exactly that too. Everybody got a handicap that, sticker. Like this, this, my wife be doing. So. My wife be like, that she driving. I know people be seeing her get out of the car like, oh, she don't even know handicap. She's looking all crazy. Mm-hmm. She put the wheelchair out. It's like, oh. Mm-hmm. It'd it, it be funny though, but. Uh, I've had that situation. I'm getting out the car. Do you have a we- uh, thing? And I'm like minding my business, going to the trunk. I'm, you know, pulling out the wheelchair. Oh, okay. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. It'd it, it be funny though, because I'm like, yeah, shut you right up. Uh-huh. Exactly. Exactly. Like somebody called me out. Somebody called me out like like a few months ago. Whenever I was getting out, to, it was this old lady. She came up. I was on the phone with her. She came up to me and re- really just started yelling at me. She but, was rude. Yeah, she was rude. But but in her defense, I didn't have my handicap placard. I I left it at the house. All right, and at this time, I didn't have it on my plates. But while she's yelling at me, literally, I'm getting my wheelchair out the car but what's so crazy is she's yelling at me when when i'm pulling my wheelchair out the car she's yelling and turning around at the same time so she never sees the wheelchair and i say something back smart to her she never turns back around and looks at me so i don't think she ever saw the wheelchair what did she yell out do you remember i I don't i I don't know but it was like but like she came at me like hella rude though (laughs) hella rude like whoo like she was pissed she was pissed, wow. but but you know, like sometimes I feel like that too. Like I really hate, I really hate when I see somebody parking in a handicapped parking spot that shouldn't be there. Like I got into an argument or a little disagreement with a YouTuber uh, the other day because he's vlogging, right? He's vlogging. He's selling his he's selling his red eye. He's selling his charger red eye, right? And in the video, he parks in a handicapped parking spot. And there's a there's somebody that works for the actual parking lot that comes over there and says something to him, right? He's in the military as well. So as an NCO, he should kind of know better, right? Because he's pretty much a supervisor that supervises over people. So he should kind of know better, right? So the guy came over there. He told him, yo, you shouldn't be parking in a handicapped parking spot. He comes out and says, well, you know, there's multiple handicapped parking spots and they're open. But he sits there and takes, like, he says that it should be okay because he was only there for a couple seconds. He was only there to take a thumbnail picture. You know what I mean? And I said, that don't really matter because, you know what I mean? Like, like for me, I I have a problem with it because sometimes you don't really understand how fast those slots can fill up. 
You know, and yeah. also you take away from somebody that has a disability that that might need to park there. You know what I mean? Like, like, like whenever me and her go to the movies, we get the companion seat that's in the front. But I always look to to see if the people that are in the other companion seats are, you know, have a disability because they tell you when you book these tickets, these are companion seats for people with disabilities, right? So when yeah. you so when you go and book these tickets, you know, not having a disability. You take away from the people with disabilities who can't book that ticket if they wanted to. So now they don't have the option to book these tickets because somebody else that's not disabled booked those tickets. So that's kind of what I try to share to people is is it doesn't it it doesn't matter if it's being used or not. You're still taking away from somebody being able to use it because it's already filled up. Hey, look, my man, look, I appreciate you coming on, sharing your story. Again, make sure y'all make sure y'all go follow the their YouTube channel, Picture Us Rolling. They're doing a lot of big yes. things on there. You know, like they on there showing you even after a SEI injury is more life on there. All right. And that's why we named the podcast, you know, more life the podcast, because a lot of us feel like once we get a SEI injury, it's over. Yeah. All right. Cause I felt like that. And there's more life after that. Yeah. yeah. Life just begins, man. Exactly. You can't stop, man. You got to keep on going. Yeah. Life don't stop. It doesn't. It doesn't. Bills still come. Everything's still going to come, but mm -hmm. hey, you got to keep on going. Mm -hmm. So for anybody out there watching, you know, look, if you in that headspace, you just got to start doing for yourself. All right. Get up out that bed. All right. Do something that you ain't do the day before. Get used to being Get uncomfortable. What happened? Like, because. I, like for example, when you leave before I left the place, I was in the program too. That other people in wheelchairs, we get together yeah. on trips and stuff. That's it. Um, they got certain. Um, I forgot the name of the program in Miami, but they got a wheelchair program for those who 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 who, who going through the process of going through therapy. Mm -hmm. They got programs that they meet up through hand cycling together and stuff like that. Okay. It, it's a lot of programs out there for handicapped people. If you mm -hmm. if you need that, like look around four hundred one, three one one. Like call yeah. them. You feel me? Yeah. Information on hotlines and stuff. They they got access to that stuff. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And, and that's one thing that I that I try to you know recommend to people as well because it was one thing that not that I was ignorant to it just I just didn't want to accept it. All right. I definitely recommend you linking up with other people that are in wheelchairs. You know, you got to learn game from them. You got to learn game from the people that's been in there five years, 10 years, 20 years. You know what I mean? You got to get the information from them because a lot of times they're going to put you on the stuff that, you know, your therapist ain't tell you about, your doctor ain't tell you about, you don't know about. You know, like they're going to tell you about certain programs that's out there that, you know, you might not know about. And it is definitely very beneficial for you to link up with other people that are in certain that are in similar situations, you know. Get on YouTube. Look, look up different YouTubers out there. Look at. Uh, you can look at Picture Us Rolling. You can look at uh, Wheels to Walking. You can look at mm -hmm. Kevin and Cassie. You can look at Cola Charisma, Squirmy and Grubs. There's so many different YouTubers out there mm -hmm. with different levels of injury, with different things going on. But they're out there showing you that look. Even that, even after whatever I'm going through, physically and mentally. I'm still able to go out here and live my life. Yes. All right. Yep. So shout out. So shout out to pictures rolling. Yeah. Shout out to you, your wife Ninfa, mm -hmm. your daughter Stara. Yeah. I I watched your last muck, your last mukbang. I thought yeah. it was funny too. Your your daughter made breakfast, and <laughs> I think she's. I think in the video she said she um, made the eggs maybe runny. I'm like I I like my <laughs> eggs runny, and they don't like it. And yeah. my husband doesn't like runny eggs either. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's too funny. I was like, yeah. but you know what? That's that's cute. You know. Um. But yeah, make sure you guys go check out pictures rolling. Mm -hmm. They got mukbangs on their vlogs. Um. It's it's cool to see other families and you know seeing how they live life too you know mm -hmm. exactly. Well, make sure to add their link to their channel down in the description box below. So if you want to go check them out, make sure you go check them out. Subscribe to their channel. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought about the interview today. And if you guys have any questions, please be sure to um, follow 
um jason also on on his instagram page and picture is rolling picture is rolling send yeah. any you know go yep give him a follow yeah and shout out to you my man shout out to the uh, uh what was the website called again the uh club secret right no club uh, it's club. Well, I, it's like I gotta get the um the link. Okay, yeah, it's club yeah. secret though. Okay, uh-huh. bet club like, secret. I'll put the link in the description. On Instagram at underscore pictures rolling. You wanna know about it? Also, or you can go to um our YouTube channel pictures rolling. It's in the description down below. And I'm also I'm gonna get out the link. Later. Okay. All right, then, my man. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on the podcast, my man. Have a good one. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hope everyone has an amazing day. Peace.